Wow, this is crazy. Selmer Mark VI saxophone for $254. How is that even possible? I guess my video about the Selmer Mark VI being really overpriced did what it was meant to do. Nah, just kidding. It's a knockoff. Hey, better sax players, Jay Metcalf here answering your questions. Today we're talking about knockoff Chinese saxophones as well as the Chinese saxophone I bought on Amazon that I reviewed and unboxed a couple weeks ago. I got lots of questions about that one. Also, spitty sound in your mouthpiece as well as classical sound versus jazz saxophone sound. So Bill writes to me, um, could you help me with something? I'm really interested in buying a, set, a professional tenor sax. I found a website. Uh, it is a wholesaler from China that offers Selmer Mark VI at less than $500. Is this too good to be true? Yes. Are the saxes they offer of good quality? Could I be buying a knockoff? <laughs> yes. Uh, well, yes to <laughs> you're buying a knockoff. Good quality, I have no idea. I don't even care. Um, it's not worth finding out if they can't even come up with their own name for something. You know, nobody should buy anything from them. So there's these websites selling lots of knockoff stuff that you could order. They give you free shipping. Saxophones cost, you know, 250 bucks. But they've got Selmer Mark Sixes. They've got the reference Selmers. They've got Yonaga Sours. They've got Yamahas. They even have P. Moriat. And I even found a Jupiter. <laughs> you know, like they're making Jupiter knockoffs. If you want to buy a name brand saxophone, buy it from a reputable dealer. Uh, if the price seems too good to be true, then it probably is. Now, looking at the pictures of all these different instruments, they're all the same exact saxophone, just with a different paint job and a different counterfeit logo slapped on there. If you want to buy a cheap Chinese saxophone, there are loads of decent ones out there for not a lot of money, like the one I reviewed a couple weeks ago that I bought off of Amazon. I got a lot of questions about that video, so let me try to answer some of those for you right now. Okay, now lots of people didn't realize that I was playing my mouthpiece setup on both saxophones at the end when I did the comparison. It was a Selmer Scroll Shank C Star. That's why in the end, they pretty much sound very similar. It's my sound, my mouthpiece and reed setup, the saxophone itself, the whole point of that video is to kind of show you it's not that important which instrument you're playing on, it's, it's you, the player, that matters the most. And also to show that even if you have a low budget, you can get started playing saxophone. You don't need thousands of dollars to buy a saxophone and get started. So right now that video has over 600,000 views and over 3,000 comments. So one of the concerns a lot of people have with a saxophone like this is what's it going to be like in a month from now, in a year from now? I think it's going to fall apart, the paint's all going to scratch off or it's going to disintegrate or something. Um, I also saw a lot of people say, you know, this thing is, the metal is really cheap, so it's it's just gonna bend really easy. And with with kids, you know, with kids who are not careful with their saxophones, they're gonna really, ah! okay, I'm gonna hurt myself. There, they're gonna, have, they're gonna be bending these saxophones and, and busting them. Now the argument that a student should have a more expensive instrument because they're less likely to take good care of it is ridiculous. If you have a student who can't take care of their instrument, they should, their parents shouldn't be buying them a more expensive one, they should be buying them a less expensive one. If you're playing an instrument, a musical instrument, you need to take good care of it. You shouldn't be beating on your instrument, unless of course you're a drummer. I am a repair technician. I spent many years working on like middle school and junior high, high school band instruments that were smashed and beat up. And some saxophones, the, the brass is really bendable. You know, you can bend it with your bare hands. And this is even some professional saxophones. It's very malleable, the brass. This one, I've been trying to bend this brass with all of my force and the bell, I can't make it budge. These keys withstand as much pressure as a lot of other saxophones that I have. And even, 
I, I, I want to say that the metal is even stiffer and less bendy than some professional saxophones. If you beat on it, it's going to break. Whether it's a really expensive model or a cheapo model, they're both going to break. If I take this saxophone and drop it and my professional saxophone, they're both going to break the same way. So here we are two weeks later, saxophone has not disintegrated. Uh, still plays great. <laughs> I mean, and I'll tell you what else, man, the Altissimo screams on this thing. So instead of sending this horn back, like I was originally going to, I'm going to end up keeping it and playing on it from time to time. I'm even going to play on it some more in this video just to show everybody that, yeah, this is not a throwaway saxophone that works for a week. There's no reason why this saxophone won't work for years and years to come. Okay, next question. Pat writes, do you have a tip for keeping spit from getting in the sound while playing? Every phrase I play, spit gets in the mouthpiece. It's so bad that I, haven't, I have to wait until my next breath or stop playing in general just to clear it out and have it come back again. My reads are new. I still like my mouthpiece, but when I try other mouthpieces, it happens less. Or not at all. I know I have good equipment. I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong, and it is getting in the way of me being able to enjoy playing my instrument. Anything would help. This is on alto especially, but it happens on all four main saxes. I play a Selmer Soloist C Star and Van Dorn Blue Box 3s and a Vendoran V16A5S Plus on my alto. Okay, Pat, uh, this, this is a question that a lot of people have. So first of all, it's not spit that's in your mouthpiece. It's um, water vapor that, you know, that condenses on the walls of your mouthpiece and your saxophone. Uh, the, the moist, warm air, when it touches the colder surface of the saxophone, it turns into droplets of water and that is what gets down to the bottom of your bell. That's what sticks to the, the walls of your saxophone. And that's what gets you that spitty sound inside your mouthpiece. And this happens to everybody to some degree. I've noticed that it happens much more on alto for some reason. And with some mouthpieces, it's worse than others, like you said in your question. The best solution for this, and really the only way I know of to solve it, is when you get that that moisture, that water uh, building up in your mouthpiece, giving you that spitty sound, you gotta suck it back out. <sighs> okay, uh, I know it might sound a bit gross, but remember, it's not spit, it's just water. The other thing that helps is keeping your mouthpiece really clean. You gotta swab out your mouthpiece and neck after every time playing as well. I've noticed that the cleaner these things are, the less spitty sound you get. Okay, Logan writes, I have a question. I am a saxophonist who is deeply entrenched in the classical style of playing, and I have been trying to change my tonal concept to play with a brighter jazz style. I really struggle to loosen up my embouchure, specifically my bottom lip. I feel like when I decrease bottom lip pressure, I lose control of response and intonation, even though I keep the corners firm and air moving. Any advice? Your sound, my sound, everybody's sound on the saxophone is a combination of the work you put into the sound, long tones, overtones, sound exercises, and the concept, the sound concept you've got in your ear, in your mind. The thing that when you are listening to saxophone in your head, that's the sound you ideally want to achieve. Now, What's in your head depends on how much and what you're listening to. So if you want to have a jazz sound, you need to listen to jazz saxophone players that have a sound close to the thing you want to achieve on your instrument. You need to listen to them a lot. You then want to transcribe those saxophone players and play along with them trying to match the sound 
their sound as closely as you possibly can. If you want to get a good classical sound, you got to do the same thing. You need to listen to great classical saxophone players and match their sound. Play your repertoire alongside recordings of great saxophone players and try to match your sound to theirs. This doesn't mean you're going to sound exactly like that player. No matter how hard you try, you're usually going to end up just sounding like yourself in the end. But it is the most effective way to get the sound you're looking for. So step one is find the sound you're looking for by doing a lot of deep listening to great saxophone players. And then step two, play along with those saxophone players and try to match your sound to theirs. Over time, you will develop your own sound and you, the influence of the great saxophone players will be heard in that sound and hopefully you'll sound really good. So let me demonstrate what I'm talking about for you. I'm gonna play two different things on two very different mouthpieces. This one here is a jazz mouthpiece. It's a New York Meyer. And, and then afterwards, I'm gonna play a Selmer Sea Star, this one here, which is about as classical of a mouthpiece as you can get. On the jazz mouthpiece, I'm gonna play a classical piece with a classical sound. And on the classical mouthpiece, I'm gonna play some jazz with a jazz sound. So let's see, I've got my Furling Etudes book. Let's just play the first one in here, yeah? Look out, this is a jazz mouthpiece. Okay. By the way, I'm playing the Amazon saxophone. <laughs> I'm gonna play the same read on both. I've got my very worn out Omnibook. Okay, <laughs> well, don't need that page. Okay, first one in the book. Confirmation. Okay. That's a summer sea star. That's a classical mouthpiece. So, but your mouthpiece doesn't matter. Your saxophone doesn't matter. Your reed, your reed doesn't matter. It's what's in your head. It's listening. I wonder how many different ways I could demonstrate that before people will stop looking for new equipment and start working with the stuff they've got. Staying true to core fundamentals like embouchure, your sound, finger technique, breathing, and most importantly, listening. Listening is the most overlooked element to a good saxophone sound. So before you start asking questions about what gear you should get and how you should change your embouchure to get a better sound, listen to some great saxophone players a lot more. Okay, that's all for today. Thanks for all the questions, keep them coming. Be sure to click the thumbs up if you learned something today. Get yourself subscribed if you are not already. Thank you for watching, see you again soon in another Better Sax video.